Thank you for being here. I'm Matt Taylor. I'm a professor here. I teach on Latin America, and I also teach on political risk analysis. So this is fascinating, and uh, I would love to just dive in and see all the data that you've got. It's very addictive. I bet. I bet. And, and I guess my questions are, are twofold, um, but they're related. The first is, what is the role of the country expert? What you've described here is sort of a lot of terrain analysis, what I would call, what is the underlying terrain? And you talked about exogenous shocks that would trigger risk. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, how do you interpret all of that? And, and what is the role of the country expert in that? So that's the first question. The second question is about, um, for example, you had the instability index. And I was curious, what is the aggregation methodology there? Uh, because I could imagine a number of ways of doing it. Some of this may be proprietary, so I don't want you to speak beyond your, what you want to talk about. But I'm curious, how do you put this all together in a way that's pulling out the correct information and the correct signals? Thank you. So I'll answer the first part of your question uh, in this way, that we remove the interpretive layer completely uh, from the analysis of events that are occurring. We, we remove frameworks, constructs, belief systems, political ideologies. We just go to the satellites. We run massive machine learning. We, we capture drone images, stationary cameras, uh, buoy data. And then when we go to data that human beings manage, we use primary data sources. So we go to the most reliable primary data sources. And that's where experts are helpful as you go to different parts of the world, who's gonna be more accurate in this or that in terms of what GDP predictions are high, low, uh, and so on. The second thing we do is we look primarily at real-time data or near real-time data. Our view is that the closer we get to the currency of the event, our forecast, as we do our scenario forecasting, it's gonna be more accurate. So that's another big change in terms of how these things are done. So we're removing the room full of analysts out of the room. The country officers get the data and then they can work with that data and still make their assessments. Policies are based on interests. So the United States makes, and so does every other country, bases their you know, policies on interest. But they should be working with accurate data. And I, I think it's critical to understand that when we're not working with accurate data, you get 13 million refugees uh, out of a, a population of 44 million people. That's equivalent to 100 million Americans being displaced in one year. There's a lot of collateral damages. If the forecasts are wrong, the policies have collateral damage and then we don't have moral outcomes. And we have to think about morality from the standpoint of outcomes. What's the most moral outcome as we develop our policies? We think of morality more on the front end of the policy uh, formation. So I think that's another critical piece. So those are some of, the, you know, some of the critical pieces. As far as the variables and factors, we looked at the working papers at the IMF and we, and we went to the absolute bleeding edge of what is happening out there. And very little is happening. They try to understand where the next revolution is gonna happen based on what happened in Tunisia, you know, a decade ago. And they're not gonna understand what's happening in Argentina or in Indonesia or some other country from that because all these variables are different. And one thing I will say, when we see real-time data, this is an extraordinary thing. Three seconds into the future, five seconds into the future, certain variables fall off. Other variables come into play and they're all weighted differently every time. So there's only the next pattern this, this, this idea that there's these historical patterns, just, it's a device that gives us a certain degree of comfort. In fact, things are constantly changing. And if you've thought about it, you think about, wow, things are completely different today than they were 10 years ago.